Hey there, lurkers. What do you think about updates in AI, alt-right, and a curse upon your house? Hmm. Well, to me, that sounds like fun. So let's lurk. Okay, now, Scott, as we get started, I want to just share with the lurkers that you and I are doing something special for the Saturday show. Oh, I was going to say butt it, stuff. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and. <laughs> and, yes, and. <laughs> so this Saturday, we're going to have an action-packed group of uh, faces you've seen and maybe some that you haven't. We'll see if they show up. Uh, but we're gonna, we are uh, going. Hmm? Are we going to have an ensemble cast? Yes. Maybe some characters we've seen in previous shows all coming mm -hmm. together for one giant Avengers-like show. Nay, an assembly, if you will. <laughs> but this weekend we are going to be breaking down with some pr guests our uh, review of Guardians of the Galaxy. All of us have seen it. We have tons of opinions, so if you want the the lovely lurkers review of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three, Saturday six a.m. Get it where you get it. Join us for our Saturday morning review, where we break down the finale of James Gunn in the Life? MCU. Oh God! <laughs> Kevin Feige's like, you're out, you're done. But what are we going to talk about on this show this week? The only thing that I think matters to the world today is crypto. AI. What? Oh, yeah, that that actually, that's replaced crypto. You're right. You're 100 percent right. replaced crypto. <laughs> now, okay, so so maybe this is a great place to start. I was scrolling on TikTok. I saw this video that was like, here are your 24 updates in AI over the last week. We're not gonna go through all 24. No way in hell. Do you want to? Maybe. I I didn't even know they had 24 different AIs. I thought it was... A and I. A, A, I. <laughs> <laughs> I thought there was that movie with that little kid, Haley Joel Osment, and what we have today, ChatGPT. There's, uh, don't forget Will Smith's fantastic film uh, with Shia LaBeouf, iRobot. Slap. <laughs> but it's okay so meme of what is saying just do what do you mean do ai is updating like like is it just regular software they're like oh here's a little patch now it can uh swear in different languages mm -mm. no these we're, we're in this really unique time in technology for those uh older people that listen to the show when i say older i mean beyond 40s just perspective for some of you <laughs> freaking Gen Zers out there. <laughs> like, out of the 40s. There was a, a big, uh, like, internet boom back in the 90s, right? Mm -hmm. The dot-com bubble. Yep. Where there was an, a huge expansion of, of wealth and businesses and uh, technology all in a very short period of time. Relatively speaking. And then you had computers. Those just exploded, not literally, Unless in terms of like innovation after innovation. AI, people have said, is going to be the next version of one of those bubbles, except it's going to happen significantly faster because of how quickly it's learning. I remember reading about uh, we, uh, chat, GPT. We talked about it at the beginning of the year. Yeah. And... There was an article maybe one, two weeks ago that said, is chat GPT done? Like, has it reached its limit? And I'm like, oh, well, we we're only like five months into the year and that's it? Five months? That was, that was chat GPT? Now it's over? Hell no, it's not over. It's not even close. It's barely getting started. Okay. Scott, Tell this me more. Week, this week, somebody decided I'm going to use chat GPT 4 and I am going to feed it every one using some other like tools i'm gonna feed it every one of my financial 
databases, my, my stocks, my bank accounts, my credit cards. I'm going to feed it all of it. And I want it to find ways to maximize my money. And it did it. What did, what did it say? It and what found, was his bank it, account like, number? <laughs> let me let me just give, let me just give you an example, which is insane to me. This thing went and he said, like, find money that I can get back, money that I can save. So it looked through his credit card history. It found a line item. It went to that website, like maybe it was like an Amazon link. It found the product, found a discount, or found like a warranty thing that it could get from it, and said you could get money back for this. And he said, do it. And then it went out, it wrote an email and sent the email looking to get something. Nothing came back. Like the the company was like, nope, sorry, we're not going to do that. So then ChatGPT wrote a legal letter and sent it to their law firm. And they said, okay, here's your $200. What? This is all ChatGPT. Current Chad GPT? Yes. Okay, so I didn't know you could do this. Is did they did they like write out the prompts and scripts so we can all do this? No. Well, I mean, maybe it's probably somewhere, but there's no like this is what I mean about we're just at this like moment in time that yeah. if you're not paying attention, shit's gonna happen fast. I mean, it, it possibly could leave too. It also could just go the way of crypto and just disappear Mm -hmm. next month for all we know uh (laughs) but so is is this something that is going to be updated to be even better kind of like what you're talking about for your story tell me tell me more about that okay so i'm just reading through some of these some of these stories right that was story number one of 24 uh another one (laughs) open ai the makers of chat gpt mid journey Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, the, the ones cool, where you uh, text to image. Yes, yeah. They're now all competing to create text to 3D object. Ooh. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Completely taking like Blender out of the occasion. Uh-huh. Or uh, out of the game. There is, and I, I'm trying to see where it exists on here. There's a company that is adding a tool... That is, uh, it's NVIDIA. NVIDIA is, uh, they unveiled something called a real-time rendering engine. Which That sounds about right. Using these 3D models that you can now create using MidJourney, it can render them live. All of the light and, and like, high-quality assets perfectly live. No more hit render and wait using AI. <laughs> <laughs> remember how we talked about originally like if ai was going to threaten people's jobs <laughs> and everybody's like yes. nah nah this this is what's happening now <laughs> but it, I, I imagine it's still got a ways to go because like they're competing to do it which means it's not here today you've still got a chance to right. figure it the, out but but i <laughs> but let, let, I mean, let's Uh-oh. just talk about the funding that is involved in oh, this. No. So all of these just like emerging technologies are coming out. A- there's this AI mind reading project where AI is able to predict what you're going to say before you say it. And it's getting incredible results. Like I-, I haven't even begun to touch the tip of what is coming out. A company that just started is being valued at 1.5 billion with a B dollars. That's like one Mario Brothers movie. That's like 1.5 <laughs> Mario movies. <laughs> that is one James Cameron. Is that the is that the one you just talked about or is it something else? I don't know what runway what runway is, what the company is, but it's valued at 1.5 billion dollars probably software that runs planes so you don't need a control tower mm-hmm. anymore this is is it too much is it too much or are we just not smart enough to take advantage of it i i mean i don't know if we're paying attention hard enough and i we... i still i still don't understand crypto all that much 
you know, I dabbled in it, dipped my toe in, sure, got out, hopefully ahead. I don't know. I still have a little bit of money in there, but I don't know. I, t- I told you this story kind of off air, but one of our former coworkers, he left a couple years back and started his own finance company, uh, like a Web3 finance company. And he's doing very well. And I went to the to the app because that's what it's called. <laughs> and I looked at it and I'm like, I don't understand. And I don't even know how to like to begin to understand or if I want to understand. I just feel bad because I feel like there's money being left on the table. Yeah. Th- I, I, there's so much, I think, that even you and I could explore about what AI could do. There's tons of fear out there. Uh, People have been sending me podcasts to listen to. They've been sending me different TED Talks of people that are talking about fear. There was a, a, like, the godfather of AI from Google quit this week because he was like, I have big concerns. I don't want to do this anymore. Sure. I, I know that all of this technology will be used for bad or for for evil for whatever you want to mm-hmm. say like there's right. nothing that you just described to me that doesn't have some sort of like military application some sort of uh spoofing of actual people like right we, we've already seen deep fakes we've already seen deep fake ai voices i we mean google previewed have... like years ago the ability to call a company and make a haircut appointment. Yeah. Or I could, right now, we know we can go on to the software that we use for our editing. And mm-hmm. we could take our own voices, create an AI bot that is our own voices, which we could then use to, you know, I don't know, prank call just about anybody. Say some alt right shit. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's going to be using it, whether uh, whether you're on one side or the other, but not just the right or the left, Willie. The center is going to use it. And I think I think that you and I have a unique advantage as where we're just curious enough, mm-hmm. but also just dumb enough to not necessarily get in trouble with this technology. Like, you and I aren't making the AI. No. But we could maybe pay for it and try to use it to our advantage yes. for the show. Yeah, And hopefully, maybe one day, it just, like we said at the beginning of the year, it writes for us. But then again, maybe not because there's a strike going on. A writer's strike in the United States is going on. AI writers go on strike. And the AI might be smart enough to know, like, hey, if uh, if they're not getting paid, I'm not getting paid. So I'm not going to do this. Figure it out yourself, human. Have you heard anything about this strike? Have you read anything about it? I have. I, I've done a, just a like a tip. Just the tip. Of course. That's – it's My all right. It's, it's the motion. It's not the size. <laughs> so can you describe it for the lurker and then I'll explain – unless you want me to explain the thing that I've heard. There is a labor union called the Writers Guild of America – and they don't feel that they are getting paid equitably by the people who are in control of the money. The last writer strike happened way back in the day in 2007 and ruined my favorite show, Lost. Yeah. <laughs> to this day, everybody hates it. And it's most likely because that happened. So a bunch of stuff has changed in terms of how people view media since 2007, primarily streaming. Mm-hmm. And the biggest complaint that I've been reading about is that streaming is not paying the writers as well as it was back when it was just like scripted for network or movie theaters. Right. The The big thing I want to bring up, or you were going to bring up something too. Uh, yeah. I don't want to talk over you. Well, so the way that a lot of these shows get greenlit, this was a, a TikTok person who was talking about, he, he's a writer for film and TV shows, mm-hmm. and he said, let me just walk you through what a, a writer's room looks like for a pilot. You get a director or a person in charge of a project, and you say, okay, I'm, I'm James Gunn, I'm going to be putting out 
uh, the next DC film. So I need to hire a writer. And you're going to go to a to a studio and say, hey, I want to make this. And Netflix says, okay, we'll, we will green light. We'll give you a small budget to make a pilot. This is, this is old school. This is what would happen. So then you'd get that budget. James Gunn would then hire the best writer he can. He'd hire some middle-of-the-road writers. And then, because you really need the ability to grow the industry of writers, they would hire some entry-level people. They would take risks. So that's how hmm. they're div- how they're divvying up paying writers. Oh, okay. Highest ones first, a, a bunch of medium ones, and then some underpaid fresh out of college, fresh out of school, people that haven't really been in the industry, they're giving them an opportunity. That's cool. The show get the show gets greenlit and then they say, "Okay, great. Hire a whole hire a whole team. You've got your team of writers. We're we're good to go. We're going to buy a series, a season, if you will." Now they're taking less chances on that. So what's happening instead is shows will say something to the extent of like, okay, we liked your pilot. We're not going to green light you for a whole thing. We want maybe a couple of other episodes. We'll give you another small budget. We just want to like, we want to take a look at it, see what we think. So now that like middle to low level of jobs is gone. Hmm. You're not getting, you're not getting a new up and coming talent in the field. It's, if you're a seasoned veteran and you've been there for a while, you're getting a job. Okay. But the we're rest just... are at, at least the way it's explained to me, and I'm kind of an idiot. Yeah. That's very interesting. Um, obviously, people love shows and movies, so this this kind of thing seems like it would be affecting a lot of media that we consume right now, but... As it turns out, people might not be too familiar with what's going on because of how Hollywood has reacted. But that doesn't mean that future shows that we are looking forward to won't be affected by this. Um, Almost immediately, all of the late night talk shows went into either syndication or reruns because all of their writers literally write for like day of, like up into the moment of the show. They're trying to get the latest things uh, that are going on that day. You can't make good political jokes unless you're writing like until the last minute before air. So that is something for people who, you know, who watch those shows. I'm sure they're like, oh, I kind of, I kind of miss my Kimmel. Where's my Jimmy? Where's my Jimmy's? They're all there. <laughs> but uh, here's a list of shows that also might be affected that we, we don't even realize how much we're going to miss them until something like this, something huge like this, which, as as I've talked about, doesn't happen every single year, uh, comes along and throws a wrench in the works. Yeah, you know, there's this there's this uh, cultural phenomena that Netflix started called Stranger Things, and it sounds like there might be one more season to go. However, production's been delayed. Dude, could you imagine? This is the the final season. This strike happens, which, like, everybody, like, this exists so that the writers can get paid their what they're mm-hmm. worth, right? A lot of the talk show hosts have said, we agree with this. Um, but, like, dude, Stranger Things, I hope they say, we're going to pause. We're going to wait because we want our team of writers so that we can finish strong. The... It, it really comes down to who's doing the negotiations with the guild because, I mean, the guild says yes or no to the agreement. This could go on forever. My question for you, though, is does Stranger Things transcend this? Is it is it big enough to where, like, I can wait an extra year to see the finale of Stranger Things. Are we really going to care? The, the quality of writing might be affected because certain mm. writers might leave. They might need to take other jobs when things come around but i don't know i don't know like it's going to be so disappointing if that show ends on a sour note a la game of thrones which to remind everybody wasn't even affected by a writer strike it just blew Sucked. chunks at the end <laughs> Big um donkey dick 
everyone's favorite late night Saturday comedy sketch, Saturday Night Live. Gone. Has this been a favorite of yours in any sort uh, of recent oh, years? I mean, for nostalgia's sake and historic sake, I like the idea of Saturday Night Live probably more than I like the current writing staff. Mm-hmm. There's, they've got some good jokes. I love uh, pretty much only the uh, Weekend Update. That's okay. that's why I watch it. Those are that's where like the pure jokes come through. Everything else is kind of just hit or miss. We talked about the talk shows. What do you think about Blade? This one. I had such low hope for this movie. Anyways, <laughs> I I mean we'll get into it this weekend. I think that there are a certain number of directors that Marvel has brought on that know how to make really good content. And I would say some of them... Directors aren't writers, though. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good... I mean, maybe they're just bringing on some shit writers because the deal is is that there's been... like the, The last two years have been a plethora of shit. And I... I am just like, what's one more show that's going to suck anyways? Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. But my hope is that things get resolved quickly because nobody wants this. Just just give them the money. Record profits can be made with good writing and have been made with good writing. And right. you need to continue to pay your writers like you're going to continue to have record profits. That's, that's all I'm going to say about that. Do you think that... Do you think that people on both sides, though, are a little angry? I think Maybe so. a lot angry? Do you think they're using some colorful language? Not writing it, just saying it, of course. Just open the fucking door. <laughs> For the final story of this week, I found a story in Ask Reddit. You know, speaking of near and dear to our hearts, mm-hmm. good old Reddit. Now, nieces, hey, for everybody that's in school right now, if you know, you know. This might be one of those things to just turn off or don't tell your parents. This is where we're going to go into a little NSFW or NSFS school salutations, whatever. Make up your own acronyms. I, I'm not a writer. Yeah. I can't, I, <laughs> I can't afford one anyways. Yeah. So the the question I pose to you, Internet, is what is your favorite curse word in your native language? Willie, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna ask you first. And this is we've gone in so far, YouTube can't even uh, demonetize this one. <laughs> True. We're 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 way past that moment. That's right. So what what's your favorite word to curse people with? Mm. Like a friend of the show, Jenna, just, you know, a typical Tuesday down under. My, (laughs) easily, my favorite curse word is see you next Tuesday, you cunt. Why, why that one out of all the ones? I I mean, uh, because you got some good ones. Shocks the most people. Is is this because of shock value? People have said some stuff to me, and I think it's the only one that people. Like when it's said, it's like, ooh, ho, ho, ho. It's the only one that feels like as a 36 year old, you're actually swearing at me. It's it's kind of like the last of the curse words on, on the timeline where once we get past this one, we're going to have to make new ones up. I mean, <laughs> this one's getting a lot of play. It hasn't technically worn out its welcome. People, like you said, yes, are still majorly offended and hopefully are offended by this segment of the show. Because, frankly, I need you to feel, people. I need you to feel. We can't just be dead inside, ignoring all the things around us. We need to feel. Deep. Deep in your lungs. All the way inside. (laughs) Gross. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Let me me go over some other ones, which this is going to be my favorite part, because we hope to be a universal show. And so... I'm just going to say hello to all of our international audience. I might be swearing incorrectly in your native language, so please forgive me. But, Perkle! <gasps> I, know, is there a, I know. Is there a translation for this? Yes. Um, it is 
finish for Evil Spirit, technically, but to the Finns, it's kind of like they're goddamn, but just more <laughs> vulgar. <laughs> and apparently, uh, Satana means Satan, but Perkel is like the great grandfather of Satan. <laughs> Uh, next, we have Kurwa, which I believe is Polish, and and that's that's all I got. All right, I've got I've got one for you. As I okay. read down here, this just looks like a fun word, Gudvardoma, which is God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of Dutch, what about Klutzak? What does Klutzak I- sound like? It it sounds like please wear some uh some tight fitting shorts on your bike so you don't get your Kurt sack stuck in the chain. <laughs> it's close. It's close. It's make sure you have make sure you have a seat on that bike, otherwise the pole's gonna go up your clute sack. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. We've got her and Sean, which is bastard in German. There's there's some other ones that I don't even know if I can say that. Like oh, Behenchad, uh, Mardchad. Oh, <laughs> there's I don't even know what I'm saying. Ooh, Osti, which is French Canadian, translates to host. Ooh, there there was uh, a couple of guys I trained with back in the day, who were from Quebec, and they okay. they taught me some uh, some swear words. One was Tabernac. Oh? Which apparently French really likes the religious swear words because it's French. It, it means tabernacle. So like, you know, parts of the church, holy things, like you say that. It... <laughs> and that this was is, actually the first comment. I like I'm a lot of things, but uh, Finnish is one of the things that I am. This one showed up on that list and it's percolé. Mm-hmm. Did it's you see percolet? this one? Perkle, that's what I said. The first one. Is it pronounced Perkle? Which essentially means evil spirit or the devil. That was the first thing I said. I wasn't listening. Obviously. Hey, All right. go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and you can putang inamo. <laughs> <laughs> Pendejo. Oh. Well, that's our show, Love the Lickers. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with us today. Please, please rate and review wherever you lurk. Hey, we appreciate the love. So remember to be kind to each other. Don't listen to what we just said. And we'll see you on Saturday. <laughs>